No American designer has had more effect on big wave surfboard design than that of our next guest, the truly amazing Dick Brewer. Uh, my name is Richard Dick Brewer. Dick, Dick is my nickname. Uh, I live on Kauai, in Princeville. I have four acres of uh, Princeville land. My sh I have a shaping room way out in the back, fruit trees all around. That's my environment that I work in. I was born in Bemidji, Minnesota. Uh, my dad moved to California in 1939, just before World War II. I lived in North Long Beach, Compton. That I, my dad owned a tool and die company. By the time I was 16 years old, I could run any machine in the shop. Going to high school, when you turn 16, you're 20 miles from the beach, you get a car. And that's when you get a surfboard. So I, I bought a Ford with a rumble seat, went to the beach. And that's when I started surfing. I uh, built model airplanes when I was young. I was a champion model airplane flyer, US, US championships, uh, flying U-control model airplanes of my own design. Then when I started surfing, I, I became interested in and building boards naturally because I built model airplanes out of balsa wood and at that time boards were built out of balsa wood. Uh, my first custom board was a Dick Barrymore who was building boards, uh, the, the photographer for ski movies. He was building surfboards in, in Seal Beach and that was my first custom board. Before that I did have a Belzy. Of course everybody started on Belzies. My first gun I built in uh, Surfside, California in the garage when I was going to Long Beach State College. You know, I didn't think engineering was, my, was gonna be my career, but I, I wanted to design the whole object, not a little piece of it. I figured if I went into aircraft construction that I'd be just designing a little piece of the airplane. So I decided to, to turn my energy to surfboards. And I, so I moved to Hawaii. In 1961, I started Surfboards Hawaii, and we're selling Dewey Weber boards that were shaped by Iggy, and Shoal boards which were shaped by Iggy. One of my first boards that I, I shaped was for myself, and then Mud Werner, who was a, a beach boy, who was a contest director for Makaha Championships, I built Mud a board. Buzzy Trent and I were surfing uh, castles in Waikiki, and after we surfed castles, we came to the beach and Mud Werner, we, we saw Mud Werner on a wave past Phil Edwards. And I was standing there with Black and Blue and Buffalo and Watanabe and uh, Bobby Achoy. And uh, when Mud came in, everybody looked at his board and were just cheering him on because he passed Phil Edwards, who was considered the best surfer in the world at the time. Buffalo turned to me and he goes, hey, I like one. And how do you refuse Buffalo? So I built Buffalo a board and he won Makaha Championships in 1961 on that surfboard Hawaii, Dick Brewer. And after that, uh, nobody wanted Dewey Weber's, they only wanted surfboard Hawaii's. So I was in business. We set up a shop at Diff's Dumpers, we called it in those days. It was, it's now called Rocky Point. There was a Quonset hut on, uh, right on the water, on the beach, and I asked the landlord, do you mind if I turn it into a surf shop? And he says, no, I'm gonna tear it down when you, when you move out. So that was our first uh, factory, was right on the beach at uh, Rocky Point. In 64, we had, I, I was doing really good. It was the biggest shop in Honolulu. Capulani Boulevard, I had a great shop. I was building pipeliners, that was my big seller. Butch Van Artsdale wrote a board called, I called the Pipeliner, which I still build to this day. I use the same template to this day. But we had a shipping strike that lasted for a year. Matson Navigation Company, a container division. You couldn't get anything. The only thing that was air freighted in was medical supplies and milk in the state of Hawaii. So resin, blanks, anything for construction, there was no way for a year. So I went to California, me and Jeff Hackman, and we helped a guy start a surfboard Hawaii shop in Lucadia. At the end of the year, I told the guy, I said, well, I want my royalties, you know, I'm going home. And he said, what royalties? He said, I own the name in California, you own it in Hawaii. 
I walked away from Surfboards Hawaii and I started, I went to work for Hobie for a year. Now that went well until I suggested he put Jeff Hackman on the payroll and he exploded. We only pay wages here, Brewer, you're fired. So that was the end of me and Hobie after the first year. So then I went to work for a guy named Bing at Surfline Hawaii in Honolulu building Bing Pipeliner boards, I called them, which was the old uh, Butch Van Artsdale template that I've been using for several years. And I still use that template to this day. Then after the Bing thing kind of uh, folded, I opened Dick Brewer Surfboards. And I've used this logo ever since. And I have a Plumeria logo also. My interest is, is more in the state-of-the-art design. Jerry Lopez and Reno Abalero and, and Gary Chapman, the people that I worked with during that revolution, uh, they were all part of me. That what I was doing was, was the collective thought of everybody. My skill is, was far beyond anybody, you know, any carpenters. In turn, I could work within a thousandth of an inch and they think within a quarter of an inch. The skill that I put into the surfboard shaping and design was far beyond uh, anybody else. And it still is to this day. I built probably 75% of the guns ridden at Waimea in real big waves down through the years. But originally when I started building boards for big waves, that was, that was my thing. Concaves, they were faster and they held better. It's been a real dream to, for everybody to be riding concaves and now we finally are of one form or another. This auction is in Hawaii, and Hawaii is, is the, the beginning of surfing, and, and Hawaii is surfing. And this, this auction collects boards from all over the world uh, and collects people for the auctions. You see people here that I haven't seen in 30, 40 years. This board is one of the lowest number board surfboards Hawaii we've ever found. And the reason is it belonged to Randy Spangler. Now, Randy was the manager of the Surfboards Hawaii shop, which had a dealership on King Street, about where Zippy's is nowadays. And Randy ran the shop, and this board, they actually had pigmented this board, and it was hanging in the shop, and Randy, I went to his house, and Randy said, take the pigment off, let's see what's underneath it. We sanded all the pigment off, and I couldn't believe the reason it had been pigmented. There was a little tiny crack in the foam up here by the nose, and nowadays, we wouldn't even bother with that back then to cover that. So this board has been in immaculate, original condition. All we did was re-gloss this board. I couldn't believe it when I sanded the pigment off, how good it was underneath. Turn it over and show them the fin, this gorgeous mahogany fin. Show them the bottom, you guys. Beautiful foam. And flip it over one more time. And you can see the surfboard's Hawaii laminate. You can see how white the foam was underneath that. It's because the board had been pigment. Now, Randy Spangler was, the, as I said, the shop manager. So he's giving you one of his business cards, one of the team patches for the trunks, two laminates. I pay $500 to get original laminates that look like this. Right here is a pair of team trunks that came from Fred Hemmings. These were Fred Hemmings' team trunks. So we got Fred Hemmings' team trunks, original laminates, business card, patch, and of course, the board. And I believe this is number 124, was it? It's already sold. We got money online. And right, there's no so, reserve. Well, anyway, I'd love to tell this story because Dick made Surfboards Hawaii was a great board. If you want an unbelievable gun, go for it. Well, this is a classic board from the early 60s. It's in wonderful condition for its age. It has not been refinished. Um, comes with a pair of trunks by uh, world champion surfer Fred Hemmings, a former Hawaii State Senator. And this is a really uh, fantastic piece of equipment. I think we're up to eight online, online bid eight. Time. Now we're up to nine. Tom's got nine online. Now 95, nine online. 95, 95, get up a 10, get up a 10, get up a 10, just like that. That's what the auctioneer likes to see, a lot of high speed rapid fire bidding. I got 95 here, but up a 10. I got 95 in the room with a bid 10. To 10, to 10, to 10. Tom, with they go 10 online, 10 to the net bidder, they're out. I got 95 in the room. 10's online here, but I want 10 11. Did you want a bid 11? 11 bid up a 12. 
He's jumped the increment, $1,000. 11, bit of a 12, he wants a bet. Do you want a worse bit of a 12? Better bit of 12, better bit of 12, better bit of 12. Cavill's coming down, hammer time, all in, all done. Anybody else, bit of a 12,000? Sold, 11,000, give a round of applause. We got another big bid winner here tonight. 11. Sold, 11,000. I'll tell you, I bet Dick Brewer sitting there wishes when he was shaping these boards, everything was worth $11,000 <laughs> per board, right? I bet he is thinking that. <laughs> And again, you know what? That board, uh, that price, a total bargain. Somebody picked up a really good deal right there. After Surfboard Kauai, Hobie Alter hired Dick Brewer to design boards for him. They had a really short run. They only made 93 of these guns. They were now specifically guns designed, you can see with the half inch red within the center, the um, T-band, of high-density foam T-band offset stringers. And Brewer wanted a shape, and almost every big wave rider in the early, mid-60s was riding one of Brewer's guns. This particular board belonged to Fred Van Dyke. And it's an interesting story. Fred sold it to Lee Kravitz, who lives on the North Shore. Lee rode it for a number of years. It got dinged up, went on the rocks, went in the racks. It came into Surfline Hawaii which was the repair shop. I actually repaired this board back in 1966. And it was it used to be all pigmented. And then we sold the board. It ended up first in Flippy Hoffman's collection. Then it went to Jim Kokoris's collection. Then it went back to Flippy Hoffman's collection. And then it came back to the North Shore because this board now belongs to the Surfing Heritage Foundation. So all the proceeds from this board are going to go to the Surfing Heritage Foundation. Yeah, is Barry Hahn there? Barry, Barry? From, hey Barry, can you stand up for the Surfing Heritage Foundation? Come on, Come Barry. on Barry. Stand up, Barry. All right. Thank you. Woo! And so, for people who don't know, that's Barry Hahn. Uh, for those who don't know, Surfing Heritage Foundation in San Clemente, California is kind of like the Smithsonian of surfing. It's, uh, they have a display of about 300 historic surfboards and uh, many other artifacts uh, that record the history of, of surfing. It's going to be an absolute sale. Sold absolutely to anybody and everybody online or in the room at any increment above $5,000, the reserve. So, bit of 55, 55, 55, hands up, 55, last man standing to the win. The lady's got the 55 here, bit of a six. 55, bit of a six, 65, 65, 65, 65. You're sick now, 65, 65, 65, 65. What you got over there, would you put this at 65? 65, 65, 65, 65, one more time. 65, now 65 seven, now seven. Online. I got 65, stage right, house left. Would you put the seven? Tom's got seven, seven online. online. Put him up at 75. Ladies, you don't want to put the 75. I like the way you bid. 75, put him up at eight. 75, put him up at eight. Come go to the bank selling at 75 here. Eight, put him at 85. 85, 85, 85, 85. She wants it bad and they want it worse. 85 and a 109. 85 and a 109. 999, got a nine, but I want a 95. One more time. 95, bid him at 10. She is determined and bound to win. Quitters never win. Winners never quit. She got nine, but I want a 95. Marlon. Your beautiful, smiling, winning lady bidder is in at 9,000 unless they go, huh? 97.50, just scraping below the $10,000 mark. 10,000, but I want a 10, 5, 10, 5, 10, 5. She says, take that. 10, but I want a 10, 5, 10, but I want a 10, 5. They're out. If you're not the beautiful blonde of the room, you're out. She's in a 10 here, but I want 10, 5. Yes and no, gotta go, and I... Sold it your way, $10,000 for the Serpent Heritage Foundation. Coming up next, we feature a man that from all accounts was the sport's first professional surfer, the stylish and often outrageous Corky Carroll, as the Hawaiian Islands Vintage Surf Auction continues.